Hi, my name is Helena, and today we're going to look at the Hermia Nuclear Medicine Processing Suite. Hermia provides the full range of nuclear medicine image processing. Uh, so let's start today looking at kidney processing. So I'm going to load a DMSA duplex case. So the processing tools all start from down the side here. We have uh, zoom, if we wish, uh, and pan as well. These are also keyboard shortcuts. Then we can go onto the regions. So we have our region list all here, ready to go. So left kidney is our first region. A number of region drawing tools to make your life easier. Let's choose this seed tool. It starts in the middle of the kidney and then just click and drag to the edge to create the region. So I'm looking at the post view here. On the way in, the application uh, worked out which was the posterior and which was the anterior image. So it's automatically placed the background region. This is completely configurable to what you would like. We've automatically moved straight onto the right kidney. We'll do the same on the right hand side. There we go. And straight off, we have the results here from the processing. So uptake uh, for, for left and right as a percentage and geometric mean. And again, this results table is totally configurable to show only what you wish to see. Uh, if we need to, it's possible to change these background regions. If you, for some reason, the, the automatic region isn't right, it's very easy to just select the one that you want to change, uh, choose a different tool, and, uh, and just redraw it to a better region. Now let's do the, uh, the duplex processing. So I'm going to, we have an upper left kidney option here. Again, I'm going to use this freehand tool, just clicking and dragging, defining the split for the duplex there. And then if we want to as well, oh sorry, just to fill in the, the lower left portion too. So let's try and make that along there. You can be quite rough around the edges because it will be constrained to that left kidney region. Uh, and then this table down here is populated with the portion of the function in the upper left and the lower left moieties of the kidney. Moving on to look at renograms. So Hermes has a huge range of possible renogram analysis applications. We can support basically any variety of clinical renal analysis protocol that you want to do. Uh, what we have loaded here is a diuretic scan. And a really nice thing about the, uh, the software, you can see that we've done it in, in two parts. So we have an initial phase, and there was a diuretic injected. It's possible to mark exactly uh, on, your, uh, on your renogram curve where that diuretic was injected. Uh, and then the patient got back on the camera after a break uh, to have the rest of the scanning. And the software is able to display those two portions on, on the same graph uh, to make the reporting much easier. You have similar tools to allow you to draw the regions of interest. This time we have a blood region and a bladder region too. Uh, so that can be configured as you like uh, from, from the region list. And then we've got the results table here for, for Renoram. Uh, so we have the relative function. Uh, this calculated from the integral method in this case, but we also support uh, the PATLAC background subtraction method too. A really nice feature of the Renogram application is the possibility to load any post-mixed static studies and then align them with the regions from the dynamic study to be able to visualize the uptake in the kidneys at that later point on the same graph as the renogram. So what we can see on the screen here is the dynamic renogram uh, in, in this view. And then the transfer of the regions has happened on, onto the static. But here, if we need to realign it, if the patient positioning wasn't exactly the same um, as it was for the dynamic portion, we can just use these arrows then to move. Hopefully you can see there that the nuclear medicine static images is moving relative to the regions to be able to line it up properly. Let's, let's go with that. So apply and OK. That means that these points on the graph here, uh, which are at the right timing relative to the dynamic portion, are representing the true uptake in the kidneys at this delayed point relative to the rest of the renogram. Let's look next at gastric emptying. So we can support both dynamic and planar gastric emptying, um, at, or a combination of both. Let's look here at the a dynamic example. So we have our dynamic gastric emptying scan here. 
we've seen it gone ants and a post. Again, the software has recognized on the way in which is the anterior and which is the posterior. So we're going to draw some regions. We have the same tool as before. We've got a zoom and a pan and some regions. This time we just have the, the stomach as our region. For this, I'm going to add all the frames together so I can see we've got 90 frames um, in the scan. So I'm just going to type in uh, 90 in this box for the software to add those all together to provide you with an easy way of seeing the full extent of the stomach for drawing. I'll window that down a bit as well. And then we can use the, the freehand tool maybe or the swap a band tool. This is a nice tool which allows you to click uh, at each point that you want to change so that if you have a shaky hand, it doesn't matter too much. But you can just click where you want to define your region and then double click to finish the region. I've got a background region too. I'll just uh, place that maybe there. Okay, so the software automatically transfers that stomach region onto the post, mirrored um, to match. And then we can see the results display. So we, uh, the solid red line is the, is the gastric emptying from the patient. Uh, we can see here displayed these um, the dashed lines. They are the normal uh, limits, so the upper and lower limits of gastric emptying from, from the normal studies. You can take here, so we've chosen the, the normal SNMMI egg whites um, normal ranges, but you can enter your own normal range uh, if you have a local meal that you prefer to use. And so it's a nice visual uh, guide there for whether or not the patient gastric emptying is, is normal. And also we have calculated all of the, uh, the results you'd expect from a gastric emptying study. Uh, so we can, you can also, so we've got the half time and possibility to define a lag if you wish. So the lag can just be clicked and dragged from this marker um, to a point and hopefully so you can see here that the table is live updating as this lag marker is uh, is changed. If you have uh, delayed uh, static images, so if you finish your dynamic gastric emptying and you find that the patient still has lots of activity still in the stomach, you can take them off the camera, bring them back after half an hour, an hour, two hours, and then you can actually put those images, those static images, also in the same application use the same regions on there, and then the graph will show you those delayed points uh, plotted also on, on this time activity curve. We have several fits as well to apply here. It's doing a decay correction um, for the tracer that you're using, uh, and you can also make these different kinds of fits as well, if you wish. Let's have a look now at the thyroid processing. So we have several methods for calculating thyroid uptake. You can use a capsule method, a measurement of the syringe, or an efficiency factor. Let's choose the efficiency factor method. So we've got a fully automated processing of the image here. So it's automatically detected the thyroid and split it half-half into different lobes, as well as place this background automatically. Again, you can change this. You can do it manually um, if you wish, but for some reason this is not correct uh, for the patient. So next I'm going to type in the measured activity. So let's say that we've got 100 megabecks in there. And as you can see, it's calculated the uptake in the thyroid. And it's taken that from the sensitivity factor, the camera efficiency factor that's been entered. Uh, so you would measure this on your camera, and then you can save that in the properties. So in this general properties tab, we can type in the camera efficiency here and then use that for all of your scans. Uh, now we want to take a print screen to be able to send the results to PAX. So we can use this tool here, take a print. And we have our print ready to be sent to PAX for reporting. Homeo also offers parathyroid subtraction, either with SPECT or planar images. Let's look at the SPECT example. So this case is a dual isotope image. So we have I123 for the thyroid and technetium MIBI for the parathyroid plus thyroid image. So we can see those two images loaded uh, over here. Uh, this third view is the subtraction. Let's just make a zoom in on that image. Just to zoom into the thyroid region. And then we have this really nice weight slider here. So we can able to just grab that and hopefully you can see there in the image that the amount of subtraction uh, is, is changing. So that's taking, and we can see here the calculation that it's doing, is taking the parathyroid uh, image, which is this one on the left, subtracting off the thyroid only, this one in the middle, to be able to leave just the parathyroid uh, to enable the surgical planning. So you can 
adjust this until you're happy. Uh, and then we've got a nice, nice clear power thyroid nodule. And then if you'd like, uh, we can take a print screen of the whole view, or in fact, we can take a, a movie going through these slices and save that as a DICOM movie to send to PAX. Uh, so if I just click this one, you'll see here that it's going to scroll through uh, the slices and send that then as a movie to PAX. We have a completely automatic processing for CCAT imaging. So you can just acquire your CCAT, select the images loaded in. You can do backgrounds from a different patient. So if you do backgrounds at the start and at the end of your imaging session and a number of patients in the middle, you can use those backgrounds and there's uh, no worry of it showing the wrong patient information um, on, on the scan or on the, on the display here. You can see that it's automatically identified all of the images, done all of the calculations for itself, uh, corrected for all the decay and giving you the retention value here. Also, it's shown the normal range. This is completely configurable to what you'd like to choose for your uh, local normal ranges. Uh, it can support, so we have day zero and day seven here as the standard protocol, but if you have loaded day eight, nine, or 10 um, scan, it will recognize that and then show you the correct normal ranges for the scan that you've loaded. So you can choose that uh, on this tab, so normal values, uh, and then we can do this day seven or day eight or day nine. Or day nine. Homeo also supports full image review for bone scans. Let's take a look at this case. So it's loading into the Fusion viewer here. So we're able to see the MIP on this side, which is created from the specs, you can triangulate from the MIP onto an area of interest. And that triangulation point then is uh, maintained on these slices. You can check the transverse slices here, zoom in uh, on this one. If we wish, we can hide the cursor. We can also toggle off the fusion. So if we want to take a look at the CT underneath, it's very easy to do that. Or in fact, we can control exactly how much fusion with this, uh, with this slider at the side here. So full control of, of how much fusion you see in this image. So here's the SPECT CT. Got different views of the SPECT CT here. Let's zoom that out a bit. Looking at the transverse, we also have uh, coronal and sagittal fused views presented. This is totally configurable to whatever you would like to see. We also have the whole bodies loaded for this bone scan, but we have the problem of a very full bladder in this case, in, in this patient. So the window level doesn't look good, but we can make a masking ROI very easily for that. So we can use our ROI void tool, just choose uh, a sphere maybe, or a circle for the quickest thing, drag that out make a right click and choose quick mask Roy, and then it will rescale that. Looks like we need to do it over here. Let's just quickly nudge that over to this one, make a mask, and there we go. It's rescaled the window uh, to a more normal looking level. For this patient, we also have uh, some statics, a uh, view with the whole bodies and the statics, and some dynamics as well to, to play through uh, if you wish. You can take a print screen at, at any point or on any of the tabs. So we could take a print either with, um, with this tool or for a quick print, that's just the whole screen. And then you can save it with a name and that can be sent to, to PAX to accompany your report. Homia Nuclear Medicine Processing also supports mugger processing. So let's take a look at an example. This is a planar uh, mugger. So we can see here, this is the image that's been loaded, the gated uh, planar image. So the processing starts with uh, with the regions. So we draw the regions. The only option here is a, a constraint region and this ellipse tool is pre-selected. Uh, so this is a good thing to start with so you can just drag out an ellipse making sure that you're covering uh, the left ventricle completely. So then automatically it's detected where, um, where the myocardium is, where the counts are and it's placed the, the endiastole region uh, and also a background region. If you need to change this, then you can use this set of arrows to, to manipulate the background region. If for some reason there's some, some gastric uptake in the way or it's not right, you can use these arrows to go up and down or, or left or right, or in fact making it bigger um, or smaller in, in any direction. But once you're happy, uh, we can just click OK for the processing to be done and for it to give you the ejection fraction results 
uh, out here. So 63% has been measured uh, for this patient. Also some more results created down here. There's quite a nice feature. So this demonstration case works nicely, but of course in real clinical routine, you might have a, a, a worse quality scan to try and deal with. So if you want to, if the, the algorithm hasn't worked properly uh, in some cases, we can go back into the region list and now we can take a look and we can see uh, here all the frames that it's made. This is number seven. So if I choose number seven here and choose this freehand drawing, I can just draw that again. So if there's, it's got it wrong, you can just draw it again. There it is. Put out of there. Okay, this background region. And it's redone the analysis now with that new region. Again, you can finish by taking your print screen to centre packs. Thank you for watching this video and for your interest in Hermia software. Thank you.